Hello, and welcome to Music with Mr. T, or as I like to call this new installment, Tux Teaching Tips. Today we're going to be looking at one of the state standards that students are working on, talking about high sounds and low sounds, high sounds and low sounds. We're going to focus on this in our teaching tips this week because I've noticed that students often confuse high and low sounds with loud and quiet, which is a very common mistake, but it's something that we as teachers can work through together and help our students understand that both concepts can be understood both in dynamics and in pitch. So we're going to take a look at the standards and then I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you that I have used over the past few years to help my students be successful in understanding high sounds and low sounds. Our standards and learning outcomes come directly from the South Carolina College and Career Ready Standards for General Music Proficiency, published by the South Carolina Department of Education in 2017. The anchor standard of focus is number six, I can analyze music. The indicator, gm.rnh.6.1, I can use appropriate vocabulary to describe pitch, tempo, and dynamics. In this case, our focus is pitch. And a sample learning target is that given two pitches, I can name the second as higher, lower, or the same as the first. Alright, so to get started, one thing we want to focus on is that notes on the staff help us understand the location of the pitches. Notes on the staff help us understand the location of the pitches. We really want to start with the staff because it's never too early for music literacy. So once we talk about that, we, I show them a picture of the staff, and we talk about ascending and descending. Even kinders and littles teach them those vocabulary words. You can use the synonyms too, but you really make sure that you can tell them those vocabulary words, what they are and what they mean. So when we look at this scale on this staff, we first want to talk about the staff, and the staff is a collection of lines and spaces. If you want them to count them, that's more than fine. If not, that's okay. But you want them to understand that the staff is the note is the collection of lines and spaces these lines and spaces here and also tell them about the treble clef this is the treble clef and it looks like a funny G so we're not only teaching music but we're also making that connection to their reading literacy and making sure they're learning their letters too so when we talk about the scale that's being ascending the ascending scale is going up the notes are going to get higher the ascending scale is going up the notes are going to get higher show them that these notes are going up 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 and higher and then if you have your piano nearby play an ascending scale from c to c then we talk about descending going down the descending scale going down when we have a descending scale the notes are going to get lower on the staff we'll then take a new color show them that these notes are going down on the staff they're going lower and then you will play your descending scale on the piano notes on the left of the piano are low notes on the right side of the piano are high Another great way to help students understand high versus low is thinking about the science of the sound. Have them repeat this rhyme and make sure you change your voice. Small, high, big, low. Small, high, big, low. Using that, we want to talk to them and tell them that things that are small are going to make a higher sound and things that are big are going to make a lower sound. If you have a xylophone or other pitch barred instrument, you can demonstrate that here. This small bar here is going to make a higher sound versus this bigger bar down here at the end is going to make a lower sound. So small high and big is low. 
can also show them that on the staff as well when you play those notes. So a high A and a low C. You can even take it one step further if you have a bass bar comparing the size of the little D on the xylophone and the bass bar D, which is going to make a higher or lower sound. Well, this one is smaller, so it's going to make a higher sound. And it falls out. And this one is bigger, so it's going to make a lower sound. And here you can also bring in the idea of, of the treble and bass clef too, because pitches in the treble clef are going to be high, and pitches in the bass clef are going to be low. Also, again, make that same connection to the piano. Right side of the piano, treble clef high. Left side of the piano, bass clef low. When talking about high and low, we can even look at non-pitched percussion, like this agogo bell here. One side is going to be higher and one side is going to be lower because one is small and one is big. Last but not least, if you don't have access to live instruments, there are tons of free ones online and we're going to highlight this one from Music Play Online. You can see the link right here at the top of the screen. And the same way we did with the live instruments, you can do the same thing. The small ones are going to be higher, the big ones are going to be lower. You can click it versus the low C. Alright guys, thanks so much for coming to the first of many episodes of Tuck's Teaching Tips. I hope these are helpful and I look forward to sharing some more tips, tricks, and ideas with you in the near future. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye now.